What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally starting on the electrical system in the camper. Because of the complexity of the install and the tight space that we're working in, I'm gonna do things a little differently on this video. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what I'm installing, and then I'm gonna go over it with you after it's installed with a very detailed wiring diagram and give you all the specs on the wiring and all that good stuff. So if you go to build your own system, all the information is gonna be right there, easily accessible, instead of just watching some time lapses of me putting stuff together uh, that may not necessarily help you in your build. So first and foremost, the batteries are the heart of our electrical system. Lee Time was nice enough to send me out two 100 amp hour batteries. These are the Comflex edition, so it's their 5.0 technology, which I will go into a little bit later, but we're gonna have these running in parallel for a total of 200 amp hours of battery. We're running some Victron stuff, which I did purchase myself. They did not send me this. We're doing their charge controller as well as their DC to DC charger. We're also doing their smart shunt to help monitor battery status, an assortment of Blue Sea circuit breakers, as well as a dual pole circuit breaker for solar because you do need to isolate the negative and the positive wire when you're dealing with solar stuff. And over here we got bus bars, we got wires, we got tools, a whole bunch of other wires. And then we're going to be running Oxbeam's AC800 switch panel with RGB keypad. It's going to give me up to eight different circuits that I can attach stuff to. I have four lights here from Kingpin uh, that I've also purchased uh, with a rotating mount. We got a battery isolator switch and just a whole bunch of connectors and crimps and stuff like that. As you can imagine, if I made a detailed video of every second of this install, it would be a nightmare. So it's gonna be much easier for me to get this completely installed and then go through it with you alongside a very detailed wiring diagram and isolate each system and really break it down and make it super easy for you to understand what's going on so you can build your own. Alrighty, first part of our electrical system is complete and that just includes getting the batteries mounted into the truck. What we did to mount them was some 3D printed mounts so these mounts basically bolt to our riv nuts that we have along our back wall and they hold the battery from being able to come up. Now, as far as moving side to side and forward and back, we have a brick on each side of the battery. We have one in the middle and then one on each front. And these are just 3D printed mounts that I did. If you guys watch my Instagram stories, you guys will know I I've, have I've a lot more detail on what is going on as far as that mounting system goes. Obviously it's gonna depend pretty wildly depending on your setup and what you're doing, but that's just what I did for this. As far as wire sizing goes, all of these wires are 2-0 gauge. I don't know what the correct terminology for that is, uh, but it is a very large size and I wanted to make sure I basically overdid it. Here is our Victron smart shunt. This is gonna allow us to monitor the battery system. Here are two power wires to make the smart shunt work correctly. They just run down and around, connect to each positive terminal. And then of course we have our bus bars, which are what all of our other loads are gonna run off of. So this is our battery switch. Uh, this is basically able to cut power from the bus bar, which will be feeding the entire system. So it's easy to go ahead and shut everything down just with the turn of a switch and also be a place that I can add a inverter if I'd like. So here is the wiring diagram. This is what I'm gonna be referring to throughout the build and make sure I'm on track as well as to be able to explain to you guys what's going on uh, very easily. So you can see this kind of breaks down what I just went over much more simply. And if we want to add stuff to the diagram as we go, as I add it, I can just click and add and show you guys what's going on uh, just to make it a little easier to explain because I know it can be a little confusing. Obviously this stuff may be a little out of focus for you right now and hard to read, but don't worry, I'm gonna have a downloadable PDF of this so you guys can download this, print out, um, whatever section you want, but it'll be much easier for me to isolate each system and show you guys what's going on as we do it. You'll notice the panel is missing on the back here, and that's because that is where our DC to DC charger as well as the circuit breaker is going. So we will get that installed and I will give you a rundown with the wiring diagram next. All right, so now we've added our DC to DC charger. This is from Victron and it's the 50 amp one. So it should charge this battery bank fairly quickly while driving. Now we'll get the wiring diagram up here. So you can see from our bus bar, we have a circuit breaker, and then that runs to the DC to DC charger, which is the out. So this is the power that's gonna be coming from the charger to a circuit breaker, and then to the battery itself. We have a circuit breaker on both sides of it just to keep everything nice and protected. The circuit breakers are for 60 amps, so it's a 50 amp charger and you just go 10 above for safety. Next we have our ground and our ground goes over 
to the bus bar as you see here i have it just tucked behind the battery and then it comes up and sneaks right up here to the bus bar itself our in which comes from the starter battery or the alternator runs from here and i have that feeding all the way to the front it feeds from here up to a circuit breaker which is on the battery alternator just represents that we're getting charged it is actually going to the starting battery itself and next i will show you how i ran that wire so according to the manual from Victron, the DC to DC charger for the length of wire that I have, six gauge is inappropriate for the amperage that's gonna be running through it. So it runs from here and it's a six gauge wire. I do have some extra sheathing on and it runs around here under some plastic. And then I have it clipped in my doors here into the factory location. So it's not gonna be able to rub any metal and it's completely safe routed just like the factory wire loom. It goes under there, out this side in the factory holders and then up through my firewall grommet, under our battery tray, around the corner, and then up to our circuit breaker. And like I mentioned, this has an extra layer of protective sheathing on it, just so we don't want anything grounded out. Uh, and of course our backup, if something were to ground out, is our circuit breakers. Uh, this is another 60 amp circuit breaker that just runs from here straight to the positive terminal. And the reason we're running to the positive terminal is because the positive lug on the alternator is connected to it as well. So now when the alternator is charging the truck battery um, it is also going to be sending power into this circuit which then feeds into the dc to dc charger and charges the lithium battery bank appropriately all right moving on to the solar portion of our build so of course we have battery positive and negative our battery positive is protected by a 40 amp circuit breaker uh, because this is a 30 amp charge controller our negative goes to our negative bus bar uh, which is pretty self-explanatory i use six gauge wire uh, this is per the victron manual there and now going to our solar solar panel itself, we've done 10 gauge wiring with a dual pole breaker. The reason we do a dual pole breaker is for solar, you want to protect both sides of the circuit, the positive and the negative. If you truly want protection from any faults or anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to do a dual pole. I will obviously have this linked in the description of the video, uh, but it very much resembles a breaker like you might see in your home and it comes with a way to mount it. Um, so it's a nice kind of like a wall mount sort of setup. When it comes to wiring for the solar panel itself, I just have it routed up through here. It goes down and around the same path that our DC to DC charger wire follows and goes up to our engine bay. The solar panel I'm choosing to use is a Renogy 200 watt foldable power panel. Uh, and I'm gonna set this up and show you guys what it looks like on the windshield of the truck. I just wanted to show you how nice and compact and simple this is to use with your system. So we've got our solar hookup here under the hood and I chose to do this because like I may have mentioned previously in the video, I don't really camp in the same spot for more than maybe two days and my battery system really could probably support me for two days. So the solar is almost optional for me. Um, but if I am camping somewhere where the fridge is gonna be running a lot because it's hot or running the fans or maybe Starlink or something like that and I wanna just make sure that I have enough power and keep that battery bank topped off, it's easy enough for me to just fold the solar panel out for the windshield uh, and plug it right into my connectors here and just be totally optional for me. Um, I do have some little rubber connector plugs that plug into the solar connections whenever it's not in use to keep corrosion and everything out of it. But overall, as you can imagine, 200 watts is going to be plenty. So I think this is gonna work really, really well uh, for my type of setup and for my type of camping. We like to be on the move and when we're driving, as you know, this is going to be charging with the DC to DC charger, which will probably be the bulk of what keeps my battery bank all topped off. This will just be supplemental if need be. I would like to say the reason I did not do a hard mounted solar panel on the roof is a lot of the thin stick on ones, they end up going bad just because the heat gets trapped underneath of them. And also I would have had to drill holes in the roof and I would have had to run a lot more wires. So this was much simpler. Uh, it'd be different if it was, I was really, really depending on solar to always keep the batteries topped off if I always had a fridge in the truck at all times, but I really don't. I only put the fridge in for trips uh, and I'm not using it for trips, it's in the garage plugged up. So this is a great option for people that want to have solar uh, if they need it, but not necessarily want to have a panel on top of the truck at all times or want to go through the hassle of hard mounting panels on top of their truck. Alrighty, we're now moving on to our 12 volt accessory circuit. Uh, so once again, we have a circuit breaker. We're running some eight gauge wiring back to our aux beam panel in the back of the truck, which we'll go back there and check it out here in a few. We got some eight gauge wiring running two accessories. So that's what's gonna run from our panel 
to our lights, our power outlets, or anything of that nature, uh, it will be plenty thick enough wire to support that load. So let's go in the back of the truck and check it out. From our battery setup, we're going over to here. I got a plastic piece out of here just so you guys can see our bulkhead. So this is allowing our wires to pass through the back of the cab without having anywhere they're gonna chafe or get cut or anything. Uh, and this just folds back and then a whole plastic panel goes here. From there, it runs out of the cab, up over the frame rail, and is tied in with the rest of the wiring that the truck has. Runs up through here, out of the side of the bed here, and then up to our power panel itself. As for the panel wiring, we got our positive wire going to our circuit breaker, which then runs to our aux beam panel, and then also our negative wire, which runs straight to the aux beam. So on the aux beam, there's two ports. You need positive and you need a negative. Uh, you also need accessory power to power up your switch panel. What I've done is typically you would to do this to keyed power on a vehicle. I've just looped it right to power because as soon as this panel has power, I want the switch panel itself to be powered up. So in theory, this panel is always lit, but I can just turn my circuit breaker off and it just shuts down power completely to the system. Uh, and easy as that to turn it back on. You can see we've got eight different slots here. We've got two aux, which are cigarette outlets here. Those are rated for 15 amps each. So they're designed to be able to run a diesel heater or plug in our trickle charger for our EcoFlow. Uh, basically just high demand cigarette outlets for higher demand applications, but also you can just plug in phone chargers and stuff like that. Uh, they're nice and hidden on the bottom of this bezel, which I did design and 3D print myself. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've seen my stories of me talking about all this stuff. We have the Victron battery smart shunt monitoring system. So that's another bit of a wire that I ran back to here just so I can get a nice display of what's going on with our system without having to open up an app or anything. The thing I really like about the aux beam is once you have all your power and grounds and all connected, it's as simple as just connecting uh, to whatever circuit you want it to run. And then you can easily turn things on and off and also check fuses. It's got built-in relays. It really simplifies the wiring aspect uh, when you're adding a bunch of accessories to a camper or even just to a vehicle. Another really cool feature about this aux beam panel is this one actually has its own remote. So I don't have to open up an app on my phone. I don't have to fumble with anything like that. I just have this remote that I can have up there by the bed with me and I can turn stuff on and off. So you can see number five runs our upper light there. Six runs both of our side hatch lights. Uh, and those are primarily so when the hatch door is open, it'll shine a light outside the truck and kind of act like ambient lighting but also they could be useful for interior purposes as well. And then of course we do have one here on our back door and we're doing that. So if you're cooking, you can have a nice direct light and see what's going on. These lights are from Kingpin Lighting. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they're awesome. I did purchase them with my own money. Uh, they were not sent to me. They can flip from red to white. And also the cool thing about them is they have a memory. So if you leave it on white, when you shut it off uh, and you go to turn it back on, it'll still be on white. Another neat feature of these lights is they have a swivel, so I can aim it anywhere I want. I have one light just focused on our main area here, and that's because say you're getting out of bed and you want to turn on some lights. Uh, what I've done is put a little piece of metal here because the back of this is magnetic. So if you're laying in bed and you get up and you're like, all right, I need to get some lights on so I can see. Um, you just turn your remote on and now I've got a nice light so I can see what's going on but at the same time, our light is away from the heads of people sleeping. So you're not necessarily gonna wake up and disturb anybody else in the truck, um, but you can still get out and go to the bathroom and all that good stuff. Another cool thing I've connected to the aux beam is auxiliary cigarette outlets for charging phones. Um, I designed and 3D printed these housings. These are just outlets from Amazon, but I designed the housings so that way they would just be placed right in those and then I could screw it right to the side channel of the camper. You can see we got a regular USB as well as a USB-C. One for me and one for Amanda over there. And all the wiring is routed inside of our frame rail. So nice and hidden, uh, not you know running a bunch of crazy wires all over the place. Uh, how I got all the wiring through everywhere was what I guess they, what they call a fish commonly used for electrical and stuff like that in construction. You can get out a hardware story, basically just feed it into your holes, connect it to your wires, 
pull that back through. Um, that way you can really easily uh, fish everything through the rest of the camper. To be able to get this wiring around, even though we had the fish, we did have to do some access holes. So this is an access hole uh, that I did so I could mount my third brake light, but it also helped me feed wires through the channel. I have also some access holes on the sides, and these are basically like an inch hole that I drilled, and then I designed and 3D printed some plugs that just snap in place. So once I had all my wiring done, and I didn't need access to that, I just snapped these plugs in to keep it nice and clean. For the roof vent fan, I just did some braided cable. Uh, there's two separate sets of wires that run up. Uh, some nice slack there, that way you can actually fold. And then it is attached to the structure of our roof. I 3D printed some zip tie hold downs and used some VHB tape to stick those and have a nice place to zip tie it all up and have it nice and neat routed to our fan and to our light. Also, some features of these batteries I would like to point out. These are the complex editions. So they actually communicate and link together. And that's what these additional ports that you see are here. I do have the batteries linked together with one cable. And then over here, this cable actually runs to a screen that gives you all information and display of the status of these batteries. So you actually do not even need a Victron Smart Shunt to monitor the battery system on here because it is built into this. So you can save your money there. I had already bought it because I was not aware that these batteries had this. Uh, and I pretty much already had it installed by the time I figured that out. Um, so a little oversight on my part, but it is nice to have that display in the back of the truck and also just have a secondary uh, system to compare to. So this is definitely redundant. Um, you don't need that. And that's what also is really, really nice about these lifetime batteries because it saves you from having to buy a smart shunt and run any additional wires when you could just simply plug in your port and have your screen. So here is our display screen. Uh, you can see we got our state of charge, uh, which is our SOC, which is at 95%. Here in Watts, uh, you'll be able to see what it's drawing or what it's taking in. And of course our voltage as well as the amps. Uh, you can see here, uh, it knows that we have two batteries. It knows we have 200 amp hours of batteries in parallel. And then it also shows us we have 190 amp hours left. Uh, really the only information uh, you're gonna probably want or even care about is just your battery percentage. I'm gonna start the truck up here and I will show you where it shows us that it is charging off the DC to DC charger. So now with our truck running, you can see we're putting around 550 watts into the power bank itself. Um, so you can imagine it will charge up these batteries very, very quickly. So as I mentioned with the solar, um, with as good as the DC to DC charger is, you almost don't even need solar to run a setup like this unless you have really, really high power demand or you're running off grid for an extended period of time. So really need to be able to see this stuff kind of real time without having to open an app on your phone or anything. It's just something you can have mounted on the vehicle and just take a look at it very easily whenever you'd like. Overall, I hope you found this video useful. I know I didn't do every little exact detail of what I did as I was doing it, but if I did, this would have been a super long video. Uh, this actually took me like a month of just the spare time I had after work and on the weekends to complete all this just because it was very tedious and I designed and 3D printed a lot of stuff to make it very custom. Um, so it was one of those things that would have been a super long video if I tried to show you every detail. But the important part is I want you guys to be able to have a nice wiring diagram with wire sizing and a very easy to understand diagram that you can take and implement into your own tool bolt system build. I did not add an inverter and that is because I have EcoFlow power banks which are going to act as my inverter. With the technology of power banks today, I would honestly recommend using a power bank as your inverter. It's much more portable. You can use it away from the truck and you can still trickle charge it with your battery system. Like I mentioned by using a high output cigarette outlet that you could just plug in and charge it whenever you want and also kind of acts as a backup power system. It just makes a lot of sense instead of just mounting a big old 2000 or 3000 watt inverter somewhere, unless you really need that sort of power output. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If there's any Anything that you feel like I did not cover, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments and ask and I would be glad to answer away to the best of my ability. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.